Okay, this is on camera. And this is not a spring chick. And today we're going to be talking about the uh, phoniness of the sequester. First of all, what in the world? What are they doing a sequester for? Uh, okay, first of all, it's we're, a, and we are talking politics. It, it's a word that the president of the United States coined that he never thought would be used because he figured the Republicans would back down. Now this is current President Obama. Current Obama, yeah. It, it has to do with the fact that they they're doing cuts across the board, which is what should be done in any business. A business doesn't set, a business goes at things with a scalpel. Mm -hmm. They don't do it surgically fine. They just simply, you know, just cut it. That's how you do it with a business. And uh, the, what happened was the, the Obama agreed to something because he thought the Republicans would be on the run. But here's something very important the president seemed to forget and the press on the left forgot. The people that elect Republicans don't support Democratic point of view. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when he got his tax increase on the nation, by bullying the Republicans, that was the only tax increase this guy's going to get the rest of his term in office. That was it. They give him one increase and he blew it. Instead, he should have saved it for a sequester and he could have gotten what he wanted. Instead, he decided to, be, you know, to, to, to basically show off that I can force the Republicans to do what they want to do. What happened was the people that voted to support him are all on recall. And they're going to be recalled by people, the, the ones that are going to be replaced are going to be further to the right than the people he's currently dealing with. Mm. You can't bully people that basically are only there until the next election. And they know oh. they're going to be there the next election. So but, uh, the, the problem with sequester is that the left lies and the right lies about it. Mm. The left lies about the fact that all these people are going to lose their jobs immediately. Well, it didn't happen. Armageddon didn't happen. The president got caught and the left got caught. Oh my gosh, and got then, caught. And then the, the right lied by simply... Uh, mean they both lied? The press is no... Okay, here's the problem. I grew up in an era when the press basically job was to expose corruption. They were supposed to represent the people. Since I got, since I got into journalism, that has totally changed to where you get something by, uh, you know, Ted Koppel before he left, he left his job, you know, retired, was that it's no longer our job to report the truth, it's just to report the story and let the people decide the truth. No. It is the job of a member of the press to report the truth. That is what they are there for. Even Pravda, which is a god awful communist publication, of Pravda means a Russian what? truth. Oh, it does? <laughs> it may it may be it may be the Soviet version of truth, but it does it is I, I love how you say that it's a Soviet version of truth. See, here's the challenge in the United States is... They don't want like to tell the truth. Are they even attempting to tell no, the truth? No, they will flat out lie. The left will lie, the right will lie, they will lie, uh, you know, um, they'll, they have political agendas which are now, okay, newspapers and TV and, and the journalists have always pushed a political agenda, mm -hmm. but they would push the political agenda more or less for the good of the people. Oh, look at there's a baby. And nowadays, the baby dog Monty Bobbles. Yeah. Oh. Today yes. they're no longer doing it for the good of the people. They're doing it for the good of a political party. The parties do not represent. Okay, um, tell years ago I was working on a local TV station, and back when they were required to do editorials, mm -hmm. I got stuck with doing an editorial. My it was my turn to do the editorial, so I come out and do the editorial based upon the fact that. Yeah, that the people that are running for office no longer are chosen by the people, they're chosen by the parties. And I did the editorial like a good little person I was. And then on the show that came up live after that, the, the, you know, the afternoon movie show, the host of the show basically tore me apart saying this guy doesn't know what to... You know, he's basically, you know, what the, you know, lots of four letter words about what he's talking about. I know, but and, they didn't have to say it like that. They oh, he it. was really indignant. And be, before he got finished, they went to the movie, and they called him on his they called him on the carpet. Said, "What you know, like what in the hell world you live in?" He said, "The people don't choose him anymore. The parties choose who's going to run, you know, uh, run." He said, if, "If you get to be a nominee, it's because you've actually got the money to pay for your own election. That's when the party gets stuck with you." And he goes, "You can't be kidding." And he said, "No, that's the way it's done today. They they made him come out and apologize for his." obscene rants and then fired him immediately when he got done. Well, that's because they were obscene rants. Yeah, but he thought that he was defending the rights of the people because these, he, you know, he did nothing but, as he put it, a lot of, 
you know, the uh, colloquial name for BS. And, uh, and first of all, I didn't want to do it. Because everybody was required to do an editorial because that's how you kept your broadcast license in those days. In the 50s, you had to do news, pure and simple. It was a requirement to do editorials because you wanted to have people challenge your viewpoint. They'd come on and they'd do the opposing thing and it made everybody look really good. But this time, an on-the-air person live decided that he was going to do it on his own and that got him canned. Mm -hmm. And there's the problem today, I mean, Everybody in the universe knows that the world was not going to end Friday morning as soon as the, you know, as the president has said the Democratic Party were pushing. But today, I mean, they really got, today, the they've gotten even worse. Well, there was long lines at all of these airports because of what George Bush and Republicans forced the president to do. No, there weren't, as they, as they unfortunately picked days that network news anchors happened to be at the airport. <laughs> and they got, I've never seen it so few people. You know, why so people? Because people don't have any money to travel anywhere. So the lines are actually, the lines, okay. The lines are getting shorter. They're getting shorter. You know why the lines are long when they're long? Because they're no longer flying as many flights. Mm. So the lines get long. We've known that. I mean, we've flown enough to know that there are long lines and there are short lines. But, um, and then, you know, uh, and then the, uh, the president basically, uh, the president made his grand offer this morning. What? He made it Saturday, he made it this morning. I'm willing to talk about entitlements, but first you have to raise taxes. Um, he said that's his new proposal. That's the same proposal he's been talking about since before the election. And they pointed out the fact that he got it. Okay, even the left pointed out the president blew his opportunity. He, went, he got his taxes too soon. Mm -hmm. And he not only got his taxes too soon, he raised the taxes on everybody in this country by a god awful amount, which they didn't, they couldn't handle the payroll tax, and that payroll tax basically has stopped the car market, has stopped the luxury. every market, the disposable income they supposedly had, they no longer have, because as they're putting it, Obama's payroll tax, mm -hmm. not the Republicans, but Obama's payroll tax. Plus, they've added, uh, they're added all kinds of new taxes that weren't there before. So. Uh, money that you weren't paying in taxes before, if you remember the 47%, you're paying now, folks. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as going to be 47% that are no longer participating because Obamacare is coming. But um, there's a disingenuous thing about, like I said, both both the, the right and the left in the news. You know, the, I, I always found it, I find it to be obscene. If, I mean, if Edward R. Merle, okay, here's the difference between old newsmen and the people of the day. And Edward R. Murrell would go on CBS News and blow the lid on CBS News on the air. But they don't do that now. They don't do it in now. In fact, more, I know this sounds really bad, but more of the news people are looking more like commentators than yeah. news people. Right. And what's the difference? Actually, we are commentating. But That's we right. are news people that are commentating. No, but what but we're doing is we're wanting people we, we to want. just don't want people to talk about what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Either right or left, they talk, but sometimes we really get some mean and nasty things. I mean, we said a thing, we did a thing on Edward Mullally once that got so many nasty oh, things. Oh, Alan Mullally. Alan Mullally. <laughs> oh, I mean, it really got, we did, oh, yeah. no, 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 we did an interview with him. And he's talking about the, you know, about the <laughs> things, and they really, I mean, they, they had a Ford. Oh, God, I mean, it, you, it got like 600 complaints. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then we sort of vanished from YouTube <laughs> mm -hmm. because of all the complaints being filed by, uh, this guy worked his way up the ranks, folks. This, he was one of you, yeah. and you did nothing about complaining. His company stood while the others fell, and they did nothing but complain about the fact that his company was standing. Mm -hmm. So, but um, I, I uh, okay, our, okay. Here's the thing, news in England may be screwed. News in England and South America may be screwed. But at least in the, in the rest around the world, they have honest news people that are being actually tossed in jail cells and shot every day by countries' governments for telling the truth. Mm -hmm. It's sort of why at the moment, both political parties want control of the internet. Because the internet is now where you're getting most of your news from. You're getting it unvarnished and truthful and uh, both parties hate it, you know, because you'll have people on the right taking the hide off of people um, uh, like Chris Christie, you know, saying, yeah, well, you know, he sucked up to the president of the United States, got him reelected. And you have people on the left, you know, well, uh, we can't have people like that in our party because uh, what they're doing is they're, be they're, they're thinking of the party first and the nation second. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's more criticism 
on the internet by by the so-called people that they don't feel are legitimate news people than there are in the mainstream news. And it's not right. Well, and but a lot of times when they're online, I mean, we understand. It's like sometimes they have a political agenda. Sometimes they're totally impartial. But here's here's the diff part part that's different is on the internet, unless they're a really larger site, they're not worried about what advertisers they have when they're po posting content. That's right, and that's the whole thing. The day you don't want to, I mean, you know, you'll seldom on the network or on cable see anybody say anything that is negative about the advertiser. I mean, one of the things, George Clooney is an a-hole in a lot of things he does, but George Clooney did blow the lid on, um, on you know, um, on, basically phony journalism in one of his movies that got an Oscar nomination mm -hmm. because he, he's a social activist. Social activists, unlike the President of the United States, basically act, they're, they're there for all the people, not for any one political group. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, when the people that came before Barack Obama were there trying to make work conditions better for, it didn't, it didn't necessarily have to be black people, it was people in the same economic environment that they were. Today, a social activist means you're either way to the left or way to the right, and nobody's in the middle anymore. Mm -hmm. So, but um, this, uh, it's just like when I was growing up too. I used to, as I was a kid, I used to work in um, in movies that basically Warner Brothers turned out, which were basically socially relevant movies. But they made lots of money, which is why they made them. If you can make something that makes money very easily, you can make a statement, and it can make money. I mean, like the, was it, the social, whatever that thing was, when it talked about something, it made money. Um, but lots of money, uh, Argo made political statements, it made money. Deep, dark, whatever it is, made, you know, by, uh, by John Carpenter's ex-wife, it made a political statement. The Hurt Locker made a political statement. Mm -hmm. You can do movies that make political statement, and if you do them right, and make lots of money. If the networks and cable, okay, Network viewership is down on their news division massively. Cable news leadership is still leading because there are more, basically on cable, there are more people that are honest newsmen than there is on the networks. It actually sounds kind of odd. Well, because um, in a lot of cases, they're uh, programming that basically doesn't require commercials to sustain them. They're like... They're, ah, they're now like, that makes sense. They're like things that are basically owned and operated by the station itself not by the cable operator, but by the station at which they're broadcasting on. Because a lot of cables only lease space from the cable stations they're coming from. So, mm -hmm. uh, so you'll have a show with, like Red Eye on Fox, which is basically really, it slants to the right, but they really have left people on it. Right? They'll blast the guys on the show. That is called journalism. Mm -hmm. When both sides, unlike Bill O'Reilly's, they actually are fair and balanced over on on shows like Red Eye, over on shows on MSN, late at night when nobody's watching them, they become very fair and balanced. On NBC News, on ABC News, on their cable systems, late at night when there no one is watching, that's when they're fair and balanced. Go watch television late at night, you're likely to see news as you're supposed to. Or on, um, go to Bloomberg, go to Fox Business, Bloomberg, and the other, other, uh, other business things, you're going to find news that is more honest than it is on the network news because these people mm -hmm. are talking about you losing your shirts on what the other people are doing. But, um, you know, what the sequestered thing, I think, it, it's journalism at its worst. I mean, William Randolph Hearst was very proud of the people today because William Randolph Hearst invented this style of journalism. <laughs> you know, it's something that you would find on a scandal magazine. And you used to not, call it in, in journalism school classes. They call it yellow journalism. They think yeah. of Britain, right? Yeah. And it's it's like the sensational part that you might see across those tabloids in the supermarket, you know, like whatever, whatever, you know. It's like Justin Bieber, whatever, you you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like Beyonce, Katy Perry. It's like the celebrity's name and you know some scandalous thing, right? Or they make it sound scandalous yeah. so that you pick it up and you have to read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to remind people, I have a degree in mass communications, and I've been in journalism since 1952. Mm -hmm. So, and she has a degree in the business of journalism. So we, and we're both card carrying. We are card carrying members of the journalistic society, mm -hmm. folks. So when we're speaking, we're spe we're doing commentary on things 
that are basically, a lot of people pay attention, a lot of people don't. But we are just trying to tell you what's going on. Um, I will tell you, here's a good one. He said, how can you know the people that support the sequester for the people that don't support the sequester? If you support the sequester, you pay taxes. If you don't, you don't pay taxes. And we're uh -huh. talking about federal income taxes, not... We're not talking sales tax. We're not talking sales tax. We're talking federal income taxes. But it breaks down exactly like that. I mean, I don't say, well, the people who support sequester, you know, have the intellects of monkeys, and the people that support, don't support it support the president. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's... I think it's an insult both directions. Mm -hmm. So, but um, it's just... It's that simple. I mean, sometimes our editorials go on and on, but an editorial is meant to cause a reaction because I don't, I don't, we're, we're going to tell people once again, people saw the chair dog get on camera a while ago. <laughs> she is the chair dog. You know, until, until this president, she didn't have the right to vote, but she can now vote and she votes. And how many times can she vote? Well, she's got four paws, a tail, two ears, a nose, and a tongue, so she can vote that many times legally. <laughs> I know, I, I heard her move. And she's she actually old seen. enough to vote, and she actually was born in the United States. That is true. So she can vote. I imagine that. So I guess until they I... Don't, they don't have a requirement for being human, do they? No, there's no requirement for being human. No. There's no requirement anymore for actually being a citizen or being able to speak the language. Well, she can understand the language, she can't speak it, so it doesn't make sense. There's no requirement to be able to speak it. Mm. And she can put, and she can actually push the voting thing because she is capable of. She has a paw. She, she has a paw. A release. She can do it. You know, we've seen her do things. She can go boom and cast her vote because, you no, know, she can cast. You know, oh, it's easier to do it when it's straight ballot. She just push the one thing and go boop. Mm -hmm. But she's been sent things for both. She has been sent things for voting, folks. <laughs> they have sent her out ballots. Even stuff for credit cards. And credit cards. So she's very important. And so. Uh, <laughs> next you know, you're thinking, what? This is old. Yeah. And this is not a spring chick. And we're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For more information, you can go to www.nbnnewsvideoweb.com or www.moneybubbles.net, which is our full site. The NBN News Video Web is our commercial site. Mm -hmm. So come check us out. Come follow us. Or actually, what is it? On Twitter. Is, no, on Facebook. It's come like us under Monty Bubbles Network on Twi on Facebook. <laughs> like like it, and follow us on Twitter for Monty Bubbles. We actually got off a large. We actually. Hey, we're also on Pinterest. We have to make certain on the Pinterest. Oh, Pinterest, we're all over the place anymore, folks. We we keep growing exponentially. Yes. You know, we actually get you know. So if anybody wants to advertise with us, that's on the commercial site. Oh yeah, and we're also on Zucker too. Yeah. So. And we're also, we're also, oh, anyway, we're all over the internet. Actually, we should do those links to there too, right? Okay. We, we need so. to do a lot of stuff. Like that.